Good morning. I'm going to show you today how to convert real data into nominal data and vice versa. To begin with, you want to remember, guys, uh, the distinction between the two. Anytime you encounter data of any type, oftentimes GDP, or wages, uh, and it's presented in a nominal fashion, what that means is that this data has not been corrected for inflation. It's presenting that GDP just using the prices that existed in that particular year. So for example, if we were to look at GDP from 2015, and we didn't do any sort of corrections for inflation, just using the prices that we actually observe now, that would be the nominal GDP for 2015. Real data, on the other hand, is adjusted for inflation. And so this process that I'm going to show you here today uh, is useful for going back and forth between the two. Your textbook is going to show you that there's several different techniques that you can use, and you're welcome to use those ones presented in the textbook. I'm going to show you the one that I'm more comfortable with. I think this one is easier to use. All right. The process that you're going to want to use is to recognize this, this formula right here. Real data, regardless of whether it's GDP or wages or anything, is equal to the nominal data multiplied by 100 divided by the price index in that particular year. Now, a price index is a representation of just how much it costs for goods and services on average in the economy. So when that price index is going up, it means stuff is getting more expensive. That's evidence of inflation. If the price index is staying the same, it means on average prices are staying stable. And if the price index is getting smaller, then you're seeing deflation. Right? I've labeled it here with the sort of generic price index because there's a a number of specific price indexes that uh, we could use for these types of problems. Sometimes you'll see uh, the GDP deflator, that's one price index. The consumer price index or the CPI is another common price index. Whenever you see those, just recognize that they're going to belong here in the denominator of this particular equation. All right, so I'm going to pull the other board over here so that we've got an example problem. We can make use of this idea that I just spoke about. All right, so on the board here, I've got a whole bunch of data characterizing uh, GDP across two different years. So starting on the, on the left over here, I've got two years I just made up, uh, 1995 and 1996. And let's say that GDP increased uh, across those two years, from 800,000 up to 900,000. All right, the reason why it's important to be able to do these real nominal conversions and the reason why it's important to look at data in a real sense is because just looking at the change in GDP from a nominal perspective doesn't really tell us the whole story about what's happening in the economy. Right? On the one hand, it could be that the economy is in fact growing as we transition from $800,000 to $900,000 of GDP. It's possible that the economy is bigger and we're producing more goods and services. But we can't tell that for sure without knowing what's taking place with the price level as well. Right? Alternatively, it could be the case that you're producing just as much stuff across the two years, but simply inflation took place and those prices went up. Right? And so the reason why it's so important to look at data from a real perspective is because it allows us to separate those two effects, right? changes in production with changes in the price level. All right, back to our problem at hand. We've got a price index here given for our two years, right? Set to 100 in 1995 and set at 117 in 1996, right? So that's telling us because this went up that we did see some inflation. All right. Lastly, in this uh, column way over here on the right, we're going to have real GDP <coughs> presented as $800,000 in 1995. And so for that base year, when the price index is set to 100, that's a principle that the nominal GDP and the real GDP are going to be the same. <coughs> we want to know, though, what's happening to real GDP in 1996. And so we want to take the numbers here presented in the problem setup and the formula that we learned about just a minute ago and apply them. Right? And so real GDP then for 1996 is going to be equal to whatever that nominal GDP was in that year, multiplied by 100, divided by the price index. 117 in that particular year, right? And then that's going to give us the real GDP for 1996. And you can see that in fact here, 
the real GDP has in fact gone down from $800,000, $800,000 in 1995 down to uh, 700,000 uh, 700, plus in 1996. You guys want to be clear on what this number here represents, this real GDP in 1996. This is showing you the value of all the production that took place in that particular year. Right? Assuming, though, that the prices that existed were the same prices from the base year, which in this case was 1995. Right? So that real GDP here in this particular problem shows us how much stuff got produced, assuming that we were using the price level that existed way back when in 1995. 